Jean-Claude Van Damme. He always makes an impact. Now, get ready for... June claude Van Damme. There's two of them. Think about it. Van Damme. Part 2. He looks exactly like you. Me? Four nerds reunite on a mission watch my bag. to watch three awesome Van Damme movies. One packs a punch. One packs a piece. Look good to me. One just packs. Together, they deliver June Claude Van Damme. Excuse me. From back in Hollywood to I don't read movies on land, on sea, and in the air. They're damn quick. Express service. Damn cool. Damn hot. So now what do we do? That's what I love about you. Van Damme. Part two. Double the fun. I would never in my life wear black silk underwear. I'm with you on that one. And double. The Van Damage. Welcome to June Claude Van Damme. Thank you for joining us on the Salty Nerd Podcast. Today we're talking about John Claude Van Damme movies. John. In our, it's John. John. John Claude. John Claude Van Damme. Um, his, the, the man, the myth, the legend. Today we're talking about Kickboxer, Cyborg, and Double Impact. We, we really love him on this show, don't we? We do. I, I love We spend John a lot of time talking do. about him. My mama took one. His yeah, name was we, Chance. I mean, we, we got his poster yeah, right, yeah. right there. Blood Sport. I wish it was a little bit higher, but that's all right. I mean, this is our... Listen, Third show. if I move that poster one more time, <laughs> I'm going to kill you and Kadish is going to kill me. We have to decide what order we're doing that in, but death. Death you know, will happen. Death. I am, I'm still living. Mm. So our, okay. our, our previous show, well, we're gonna run away together. episodes, <laughs> Eventually. did really well. <laughs> you guys good? She likes the fat. She's a chubby chaser. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, the first Jean-Claude Van Damme movie or TV sh podcast that we did uh, really hit it on YouTube. Even though it's audio only, it's one of our most viewed uh, videos. And honestly, yeah, that's we're really weird. so pleased. And we're so <laughs> stoked. Awesome. We're like, wait a minute. Other people are fans? Like, this is awesome. So yeah, this we, is we our second show. Like Bloodsport and yep. a couple others. And a then, bunch of movies. And then we did a follow-up. Yeah, did Time Cop. Then we did a follow up where we did two more of his movies, Hard mm -hmm. Target, and which is where your shirt is from. Yep. Yes, yes. And uh, the first John Woo film in America, right? No. Um, I, well, it might have been. I think it was. <laughs> but, but was that the one with Wilford Brimley? Yes. Diabe yes. Diabetes. Yes. Diabetes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but the this image is actually from um, um, Jean Claude Van Johnson, which is the Amazon original TV show. But mm. the, the quote. My mama took one. <laughs> That's from Hard Target. Because his name was Chance. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to be talking about uh, three more Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. And I am joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds, starting with Matt Vader. Welcome, dude. Hey, man. What is happening? You seem spry today. I, I am so happy to be here today. <laughs> this... This is, this he switched is, to vodka from whiskey. I did. I switched to vodka. It, it, like, <laughs> it makes me horny, baby. So, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know what's going on. The Austin Power quotes come it's out. The, uh, it's the Red Bull and the, and the, and the Tito's. So, right yeah. on, dude. He's uh, drinking all my Tito's. It's almost gone. <laughs> He's literally in the kitchen like, glug, glug, glug. Ha, ha, I'm drinking it all. I'm also joined by our ambassador of estrogen, Hello, Jude. keeper of the alcohol. Keeper of the alcohol. <laughs> and, and the cork bottle. And the cork bottles behind us. Corky. Corky, Corky is here. <laughs> shout out to Corky and shout out to Cor Mangold. <laughs> We love is, you, buddy. Is that our thing? Yeah, that's going to be our shout thing. Shout out to Mangle. Shout out to Mangle. Hey, buddy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the shout out. Uh, and also the producer of the show, Matthew Kadish. Oh, I'm so happy to be doing a John, John Claude Van Damme episode. <laughs> I don't know why, because like I was never a big fan of his growing up, <laughs> but in my old age, I'm like, give me more Jean Claude. Jean -Claude. Yeah. He's, like a, he's like a a, a good wine, right? He's just like, he's <laughs> he better with age. He yeah. really does. 
and and like the the movies that he's making now are even better than the ones is he, he made. Is he making movies? Yeah, he made a like movie in 2019. Mm-hmm. I, gotta, I think it was a French out. movie I, though, right? I, I've got a uh, I've got a trailer reaction we're gonna do later <gasps> for, his, so for his excited. his newest movie. Oh, yeah. That's amazing! I can't wait. All right, guys, before we get started, we're going to take a quick break, listen to some sponsors for the actual audio only podcast, and then we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you'd like to support the podcast, go to saltynerdclub.com. There you can find our Patreon page, and you can get exclusive access to all kinds of really cool stuff like blooper reels, behind the scenes photos, and of course, you get to contact the hosts themselves and chat us up and let us know what you would like to us Talk to a review. Bunch of shit at Talk us. a bunch of shit. <laughs> Tell us our studio sucks. All kinds of fun stuff, and we'll listen to you. We will. We mm-hmm. promise. Um, okay, so before we get into this, um, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, guys. And welcome to all of our new subscribers. We've gained over 700 in the uh, past couple of weeks or days, I guess. (laughs) Two days. Two days. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we'd like to welcome all of you. This is If this is your first um, SMP weekly show that you're watching, what we normally do is uh, we go through three different movies of a a particular genre or that features a particular actor or something like that or a theme. And uh, we just talk about them and we have a ton of fun doing it. Um, nothing is meant to be taken seriously here. We just kind of goof around, drink a little bit of alcohol and have some fun hanging out with fellow nerds. So grab your favorite beverage and hang out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, Jude, Hmm. what is the first movie on our list today? All right. 1989 Cyborg rated R with a runtime of one hour, 26 minutes. Had a budget of Five hundred thousand dollars. That's it. Yes. Oh, that makes whoa, whoa, whoa. so much sense. How much? Five hundred thousand. And what movie are we talking about? Cyborg. Cyborg. Are you okay? I'm tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Put the phone down. I, I, I have a caveat to that. Mm. Of course you do, because he loves to correct me. <laughs> well, it's not your fault. Go ahead, Katie. Because oh, because I just have a lady brain. <laughs> no. Um, so and we love you for it. <laughs> so th- this film, me. Cyborg, is the last film that Canon Pictures released theatrically before after it went bankrupt. Aww. So Canon Films, you know, they made a lot of Chuck Norris movies. They made a lot of these like B movies. And in the late eighties, they were making a move to become a major studio by doing big budget pictures like Masters of the Universe and stuff like that. And uh, and unfortunately they were very irresponsible with their money. They ended up going bankrupt. And they had spent $2 million um, doing pre-production on two films. One was gonna be their Spider-Man movie because they had the rights to it. And the other was going to be the sequel to Masters of the Universe, the He-Man 2, basically. And the director for Cyborg was going to be directing both of those movies at the same time. Oh, my God. (laughs) And Canon Films had spent $2 million on sets, costumes, a bunch of of pre-production stuff. And when um, all the money dried up, they didn't have enough money to finish those two projects. So the director, um, whose name is Albert Pyun, he basically took all the sets and costumes for those movies that they'd already spent $2 million on and rolled them into this movie. All right. And he made up a script to incorporate all that stuff. <laughs> um, so even though Canon put up $500,000 for this movie, which is you know, what the budget is listed as, it's actually technically $2.5 million because they took the $2 million that they spent on Spider-Man and Masters of the Universe 2 and rolled it into this film. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, so it had a budget of five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> what do you guys think it brought in at the box? Oh God, oh, um, uh, I'm gonna say, I don't know, maybe two million dollars. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll say three just to be three? different. Yeah, okay. ten million. Dollars. Okay, no way. <laughs> Great. Good, good job. And that's movie. 80s money. Yeah. yeah. So 30. that's the power of Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> Are you ready for the synopsis? Yeah, so, go for it. Okay. What? Oh, Vader's not ready. <laughs> I'm sorry. Where where was uh Jean Claude in his movie career at this point? Wasn't this one of his really like early movies? A, uh, is this before or after Bloodsport? Yeah. Because this Bloodsport is, was his first. This is after Bloodsport, and okay. it was because that Bloodsport had done so well mm-hmm. that uh, Okay, I thought it was like one of his early was. ones, though. Yeah. Right? So, so he's yeah. he looks very young. Yeah. Well, this came out the same year as Kickboxer. Okay. All right. So go ahead. What's the synopsis, June? Are you ready? Yes. What came first, the plague or the pirates? And other post-apocalyptic questions. He's a hired fighter with a tormented past. She's a cyborg with science info who gets kidnapped by Armageddon pirates. With the help of his begrudgingly platonic lady friend, they track Fender and his band of freebooters across the sea between Charleston and Atlanta. To save the cyborg and the brainwashed stepdaughter Fender stole away from him years earlier. 
Discuss. I, I hated this movie. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I hated this movie so much. <laughs> I, I could barely finish it. You're the dumbest person alive. <laughs> I I'm going to just take a guess and just say that Jude and I love this movie. How do you love it? You hate when movies Dude, don't have a budget. I love <laughs> You're this crazy. movie. You're crazy. I fucking love this movie. I feel like movie. I picked all three of the movies this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, was, this was my pick. This was, was my least right. favorite okay. one. Okay. And this was the best one. Oh. All right. This... In my head canon, right? <laughs> this is like on the other side of the ocean from where Mad Max is doing his shit. Okay. Just, you think it's a connected it, universe? The whole, t- whole world's c- connected. They're sailing the open <laughs> sea. Oh, God. I mean. Between we got, Charleston and we got, Atlanta. We got chain no mail. Sea. <laughs> we got chain mail. Oh, uh, yeah. All we the got chain mail. fucking shoulders with <laughs> spikes. We got fire and plague and disease. And, you know, we got Van Damme with his really cool flock of seagulls haircut in the flashbacks. Robot heads. Bad android special effects. This movie has everything you need. The lumpiest tits you've ever seen. It's got the best villain from Cobra. It was was Fender. Fender. It's like. That's a pirate name. And he just like goes around and goes. Kill them. <laughs> and and, and uh, it's just yeah, every yeah, it's every just, time they want like a real serious villain moment, they just have the guy look in the camera and take his sunglasses off. Oh god. Off. It, Get those steely blue eyes looking at you. This, I was if, scared. <laughs> when it comes to really bad fucking movies, this is at the top of my list. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. This is my Jude movie. Really? This is absolutely my my chopping mall Van Damme movie. Yeah, 100%. I've been wanting you guys to watch this movie. I wanted to watch this movie last year. Oh my gosh. So when we decided to do Van Damme movies, I really made sure I that we were going to watch this. I am absolutely shocked that you like this movie this, this is, much. This is in my zone, dude. This is post, this is apocalypse. Date night movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> like I said, this is, this is, you know, Van Damme shooting people with this weird, Mad Max gun. With the, yeah. And, and, with the spikes. Oh, God. It's just, this this thing has everything I want in a bad it's movie. It's got, like, the worst wig. And, oh, like, part of it is in a ponytail. <laughs> but, like, most of it is just, like, here in over his face. His face. Oh, yeah. I'm in the apocalypse. Every every uh, set was just reused for different shots. Who cares? The yeah. freaking, the concrete building, that the, just the dilapidated building I, that they shot, like, 20 minutes of the movie in. Uh, this is one of those really bad movies that I watch once a year just God. because. Wow. Oh, I almost didn't finish it, dude. <laughs> it's so it was good. so bad. It's Alex. so good. I hated it. I felt like okay you're you guys are gonna absolutely hate me for saying this but i I felt like this is an overly complicated (laughs) ripoff of conan the barbarian okay yeah so what fine it was like Great. we're gonna have the Conan Barbarian plot somewhere in there, but then we're gonna add androids and like some weird disease. And she's got the cure. Mix it all in. Yeah. Why? It's a walking USB port. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. But this when this movie was made, we didn't have USB ports. Why does it have to be an android? Because the because androids she are cool. Had herself turned into science. <laughs> That's right. It's so stupid. For the love of science, Matt, can you back me up on this, or do you Don't love this you movie? Dare. No, I love this one. Oh! <laughs> I was surprised. I'd never seen it before. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Oh, God. I'm alone. But, but, you know, don't get me alone. wrong. It's a bad movie. Yes. <laughs> but it's Jean-Claude Van Damme bad. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, right. A, that's, that's a different level of good. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Here I am on my hill <laughs> with my salty nerd flag. Fall upon your sword. <laughs> so it'll fall upon my sword. So, all right. Well, convince me, guys. Tell me. You kind of already explained what you love about it. It's just bad goodness. <laughs> it's, it's everything about this movie is fun. Jude, talk to me. What is it about this movie that you love so much? Post-apocalyptic. Okay. There's plague. There's robots. Oh, they, the they're, match. they're he's, trying to finger me. Pond fork <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and like you get this backstory where he fell in love with this woman during the apocalypse and they wanted to make a life together and fucking Vendor shows up. That's He's the most interesting part of the asshole movie. asshole pirate guy mm-hmm. and he throws like the lady, Van Damme, and their son down this well and and he, he, they're like um, makes tied his, together with um, makes bar- the barbed, girl wire. Wire. barbed wire. The barbed wire. Yeah. yeah, and he makes their young daughter like hold the barbed wire, and he's like, "It's up to you. It's up to you." <laughs> his voice is so gravelly. <laughs> it's up to you, sweetheart. If you can, if you can hold them 
out of this well, you can have them back. But if not, like, I get you. And of course she can't hold it. It's three fucking humans. Yeah. And the barbed wire <laughs> rips through her hands and her mom dies and her brother dies. And Van Damme is like, fuck them. And he crawls out of the well. <laughs> and he goes on this mission to like kill Vendor and get back the daughter that he that was stolen from him. Yeah, yeah. And she's totally brainwashed. And he's got a sh- she's got a shitty haircut. <laughs> well, I don't think- It's so he, good. He it's so good. He that- didn't- he didn't know she was with them. No, at, not at first. So. I think he assumed that she was dead. But that is the best part of this movie. Yeah. But yeah. they they fold in all this other nonsense. No, dude. The nonsense is the best part of no, the movie. No, I don't give a shit about the android. I can't even keep track oh, no, of her the, half the, the time. The android, who cares about the android? Because she yeah, looks no, no, exactly like the main girl. She is important because she's going to save the world. But also, we don't care. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we really, we really she's don't. She's really the MacGuffin of the movie. Like, yeah. This movie is called Cyborg, so you would think that Jean-Claude Van Damme That's what I cyborg. thought was going to happen. He's not the cyborg. Uh, the cyborg is actually a very small part of this movie. Yeah. I, was, I was hoodwinked <laughs> yeah um but but it, it's kind of funny because like this movie it starts off it says sometime in the future so yeah. we don't know exactly when this happens but in the opening crawl they say that society collapsed mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then the plague hit right. now normally the plague would hit and then society would collapse but, <laughs> well um, that's what happens when society collapses because ever everyone stops washing their hands and just sleeping in dilapidated buildings and on of, of course there's going to be a yeah. plague and the plot for this movie is basically jean-claude van damme he plays a a type of person called a slinger who's basically like a mercenary mm-hmm. um he's like a gun for hire and he's trying to track down um, this kind of warlord, like pirate wasteland leader. What was his name? Fender. 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 Humongous. Yes. So, so this guy <laughs> Fender kind of like runs this band of, of roaming ravagers. And he wants the plague to continue. So um, because, you know, he has so much power in this post-apocalyptic world. And so once he finds out that the cyborg has the key to getting the cure... He wants to use the cyborg to lead him to the lab in Atlanta that she has to-, to The del- science building. The science building <laughs> that she has to deliver the information to so he can kill the scientist and ensure that no cure to this plague can ever be made because he likes the- oh, That was the, the opening crawl, right? I like yeah. the world right now. <laughs> yeah. Like- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Jean-Claude <laughs> Van Damme's character, um, he's the one, like he's got a personal vendetta against him, against uh, Fender. Fender. Yep. Uh, Because Fender killed um, the woman that he loved and his surrogate family. And so he's kind of like got a one track line of tracking Fender down and and killing him. And so this journey kind of intersects with saving the world in terms of delivering the cure. And what was funny is as we were watching it, Jude and I were really confused about the geography on this. (laughs) And and it turns out that they start off in New York City. Oh, is that where they start? Yes. It's it's never really explained. It, It. it, it sort of is, but you have to be paying attention to it. Well, the bridge, right? There's a big bridge in the well, opening well, scene. Oh, I don't recommend you pay attention to this while you're watching <laughs> it. Well, no, no, no. well the, the street scene with like the girls, 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 triple X, mm-hmm. it's like all, all the people are crucified in the streets and stuff like that. That was New York City. Huh. And so the boat that they steal is from New York. Okay. It's, it, I think it's in Albany. And uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and his plucky sidekick with the 80s boobs. Um, <laughs> Dude, there is nothing wrong with 80s boobs. Right? <laughs> 80s, boobs 80s boobs are far superior. Yeah, so, the so they boobs. trek from New York down to Charleston. Okay. And um, on foot. Mm-hmm. And they... Uh, if they beat the pirate ship. Well, they get there at the same time as the boat that the pirates uh, well, the, stole. That was, that was a pretty slow There is nothing barge. faster than Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can try and beat him on a boat, a motorcycle. Doesn't matter. A well, jet, it, it, in a the, bullet. In the movie, <laughs> they, they take a shortcut through the wasteland, which is when they have their first big action scene against like the, the raiders with like the gas masks on and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that shortcut allows them to somehow... Traverse the distance from New York to Charleston uh, hey, much quicker. Whatever. It works. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Bullshit. It doesn't matter. This if, is this is not a movie that you can take seriously. I thought you were done at that. This is you, not a movie. You you have to like But just, I like it. You have to suspend your 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 common sense with this thing, man. Oh my god. If, well, if Zack Snyder made this movie, you guys would hate it. Well, that's well, not true. You don't think so? That's not necessarily true. I, I, I don't I, think I you would. would. Kate would. Yeah. <laughs> be, because it'd be three hours long. <laughs> the three hours of which are, are slow motion. Slow and motion. that's one of the and things it still wouldn't make any sense. Look, one this of the movie, things that's great about this movie is that it's not that long. It's 80, <laughs> 87 minutes. 
Mm-hmm. 87 it, minutes, it doesn't so. even go 90. Dude. Well, the, the funny thing about this movie is that, so much like Bloodsport, Jean-Claude Van Damme took over the editing of this film huh. because uh, after no. their first test screening, they got such poor reviews. He's like, give the film to me. I will make it better. <laughs> and so like- he's, I put he, more of my muscles in it. <laughs> he, he spent two months re-editing this movie to feature more action and take out a lot more of the drama. Uh-huh. Mm. And so like, yeah, it was more of him, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just fighting. And, uh, and you know, I, I guess it worked. It worked with Bloodsport, too. I feel like we yeah. didn't even need the plucky sidekick at all. No, she was just there to take her top off. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about this is that, um, so pretty much every movie that Jean-Claude Van Damme did in the 80s was originally supposed to cast Chuck Norris in it. And so Chuck Norris was really supposed to be the lead. I, in I cannot movie. see that. I'm so glad it was Jean-Claude. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would have been so, so much worse. Listen, I want to... Can we? I want to talk about the villain. The yeah, hair, go ahead, Fender. Oh, so many hairy knuckles in that movie, dude. This this guy, when I, when I think of movie villains, mm-hmm. he is really high up there on my list. Seriously, he really is. I always have that that image in my head of the the, the big muscle dude wrapped in chain mail yeah. with the shoulder pads and and the sunglasses, the visor and, sunglasses, and the chiseled jaw and the <laughs> fucked up teeth, and it's like you know, and he doesn't have to even talk. What if we had like he a... Just, he just like... He's... Kill them! He's the Burr! Tulsa you know, Dune. He's the Tulsa Dune of, of this movie. Tulsa Doom yeah. is another one I think of. Is it know, Doom absolutely. or Dune? What if we Doom, had Doom. like a villain movie with this guy and the villain from Cobra? Oh, God. It's the same dude. Amazing. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it is the same dude, but they, they could it's be the same It's not the same, same dude, dude, but like they, have the they same could look. play twins. Yeah. If this guy in Cobra... Or, or not Cobra. <laughs> if this guy in Cyborg had twin axes and he was like clanging them over his head. Oh, shit! Oh, my God. He belongs in a Viking movie. Oh, I would just like... Just lose it. I yeah. It would just. <laughs> so, it would be so, all so over the. It would, would be, it would be all over the table. Dude. Yeah. It would just be <laughs> <Same>. awful. <laughs> so, so you know, uh, Fender's eyes, the big bright yeah. blue eyes. So yeah. They never explain this in the movie, but supposedly that's a side effect from the virus, and that's what kind of yeah. made, made him crazy. crazy. Oh, okay. But the the budget was so tight that they only had two pairs of contact lenses for the actor, and he <laughs> and he lost the first pair like the first week of filming. And so, like, uh, he he had to like guard like the that pair of, so, and so that, that's one of the reasons why they don't show him. Yeah, all so just, oh. You're gonna keep your glasses on for the entirety of the shoot until the very end. No, 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 <laughs> because that was his signature move of intimidation: is to walk up to somebody and take his glasses off. I thought that those were his actual eyes, and they cast the actor because he had these like steely, crazy blue have eyes. Have you ever seen anybody that had crazy ass eyes? Like yeah, that? yeah. I have for sure. I know people that have crazy blue eyes. Dude, I, I need to meet this person. I will I will call them up and have them come on the oh, podcast. Okay, cool. Or, or just take a picture. I want to <laughs> oh, yeah, take a picture. It. No, people out there have crazy blue eyes, and I, I honestly was like, wow. I've seen a lot of crazy. You, eyes. you know what's yeah. weird is you guys have been referring to this guy by name. I've seen this movie probably thirty times. I've never really bothered to learn his name. Fender. Fender. They only screamed it like seven times. I, I, I don't know. I don't even care. Fender. Yeah, he's just he's just cool. I I, I like him. Uh, You're a purist. Baby. Well, Whatever, man. The, just, uh, yeah. the moment in this movie that kind of made me, was I, like, uh, that made me think of the Conan the Barbarian ripoff is one of my favorite scenes in the well, movie. Conan the Barbarian is in this movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger? No, the guy who like did like a cheap Conan knockoff movie is like one of his oh, like, big henchmen dude. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't is know he that. sharpening a knife? He's, well, he's the guy that uh, gets killed in the, in the sewer scene. Oh, okay. Where he's oh, like cool. doing the splits above him. That, so that, the, that was my favorite scene. Oh God, it was that so was amazing. Awesome. It was so no, awesome. it wasn't because it's awesome. So like the way the scene set up, like we see Jean Claude Van Damme hiding in the dark, and it's yeah. like a close up of him. Mm-hmm. And, then but we, and then we see the guy like making his way through the sewer, and then we see Jean Claude Van Damme. He's still hiding, and then it cuts to a wide shot, and Jean Claude Van Damme is doing the splits. Oh God, over so him, good. with the knife. guy, <laughs> with the knife. Like Jude and I started cracking up the minute we saw that. I want that poster be, 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 on my wall because we were like, "Where's he hiding?" And then it's like, "Oh." That was pretty badass. The star of each of these movies that we're going to talk about today is Jean Claude Van Damme. The split. Yeah, the split. Yeah, absolutely. No, but I like I, I love that scene. That was a really good scene. I almost forgot about it. But yeah, that was like a, a Splinter Cell Sam Fisher move. If you guys are fans of the video game, that was epic. But like that scene where they crucify him on the ship. Oh, and he's yeah. sitting there with the, with the things through his hands yeah. and he's oh, just hanging there. Total Jesus moment. Yeah, Jesus moment. I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is Conan the Barbarian, like, apocalypse yeah, world. absolutely. I'm like, okay, I get what they're trying to do. I get it. I get it. And I, the, I, the, the fact that you don't like this movie is very... It was just... I don't, I don't understand. It, it really is... I love I mean, your guys's... It makes me sad. I love your guys' passion for it, but I was just kind of like, 
it was just too low budget for me. I needed more. You're ruining the podcast. Dude, <laughs> shut up. Shut up, <laughs> shut up host. Shut up. All right. Uh, any, do you guys have a favorite moment? What's your favorite moment in this movie? Oh, I think I already talked about it. It was, it was Matt's the same. As oh, Matt. really? The splits? It's, it's the splits in the sewer. Okay. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. It's pure Van Damme. What about that final fight scene though? Oh, so the final fight that, scene it's is It's the final weird. fight scene from uh, Universal Soldier. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's really weird because we go from the wasteland, the fight in the wasteland. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we just like fast forward. To the end of the movie, yeah, and it's the and it's and it's the and it's the final fight scene, yeah, and, and and you can totally tell it's built on some cheap ass set, and and you they know just turning and the hoses and on. they're like throwing the the fog shit in front of the fan machine and stuff, and <laughs> it's 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 so cheesy, it's so cheesy, <laughs> but it's so good, it's so the, much. The fun. bad guy literally it's, does nothing but just scream and show and, his abs, and all of a sudden he's he got so these, intimidating, and you get all these other henchmen that just kind of like where these guys come from, yeah, yeah, but they pick these guys up on a trip. And he's got all these guys. He's like, and, and he's all like, get him. Yeah, and yeah. You know, it's funny because like Jean-Claude Van Damme was literally just crucified. And then the next yeah. scene, he, he's fine. He's yeah, good. you know, it's yeah. like his wounds are healed. It's like they literally show his wounds. It's like we fast forwarded like six months. Yeah, yeah. It and was it's like no context, no Listen, nothing. I already said nothing is faster. That includes his healing. <laughs> That's right. Is he Wolverine? Nothing, now, if they nothing added nothing heals faster than Jean Claude. Van. If they added that element where he had like part of the virus was like he had like super healing or some kind of mutation, mm -hmm. that would be pretty badass. I think they need to do a remake hey of this man, movie don't with fix Jean Claude. Not Dude, so man, what, a, what what would a remake of this movie look like? Is this I one, still is want Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, 100%. But it's got yeah. like four sequels. You know that, right? It does? Yeah. I, 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 I have not watched any of them. Guess what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> It's just uh no, I did not know that, Matt. Um, you just blew his mind. Yeah. He can't even yeah. get his thoughts uh, together. Uh, 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 he needs a minute now. The, the director Albert Pyun, like like he's made a career off of making sequels to this movie. <laughs> Do any of them have Jean Claude in them? Oh my god! Uh, I think the second one might. Oh man, okay. But um, it's hard to it's hard to say. I'd have to look it up. I don't I don't know. Man. Like, I don't know if I'd want to watch a movie like this without Van Damme in it. It would be no. It weird. has to be Van Damme. Yeah. It was, Even though I don't like this movie, I can appreciate the fact that it does not work this, at all without Van Damme. To, to me, <laughs> this is one of those so bad it's good movies. Mm -hmm. It's it's a cult movie to me. Okay. I don't I don't I don't know if anybody else feels that way about it. But obviously, I mean, some some people do because you can watch this movie. Yeah. Somewhere, and you know, we did this week, and it was fun, and. You know, Van Damme has a good barber. He's got the 80s <laughs> flat top thing going on. and He's so you know, intense. Yeah, it's just... Uh, I mean, the fight scenes were fun. Some of them were a little corny. Uh, but the biggest thing for me was just the reusage of, of scenes and, and uh, props and stuff like that. I'm like, it's obvious that they didn't have a big budget and they were just kind of trying to use what they had. But they didn't, it took need, me out they of the didn't, they didn't need one. Uh, it took me out of the movie. movie. It took me out of it. I'm like, oh, there's the same shot. They just moved the camera two feet. Have, have you gone back and watched movies like terminator and stuff lately not in a while man that movie has not aged well no no oh no but you know i i this it's just i mean look at her we're watching we got the thing showing on while we're oh the 80s this. hair is amazing the oh, 80s hair, hair is so good I mean, yeah. there is no shortage of aquanet in the <laughs> future okay it is incredible and in the in the in the titties and, and stuff it's just it's so good i concur it's all right jude so good what's I your favorite it. what's your favorite part of this my movie? favorite yeah um, I mean, I think we, we all agree. Like we, nobody cared about the cyborg, yeah. but, uh, when her head comes off, <laughs> Oh God. And, oh my God. It's so bad. It's great. <laughs> when, when she like takes a, off the wig. She's got oh, like a yeah. weird eye. <laughs> and it's, like, it's like they left the prop outside too long and it started to it melt. It was like yeah. kind of melty. She had a melted face and they're just like holding her robot head. <laughs> It's like it's like those scenes. In, it's like those scenes of Star Trek: The Next Generation yeah. when Data is in pieces. Yes, and it looks really freaking weird. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's not Data. That's, it's the, like, that's a mannequin. It's yeah, a prop it's, head. It's so weird. Yeah, but yeah, she's right. It's good. All right. I'm so glad you like this movie. Of Girl. course, it's like, it's like, we are we are bonding hard today. It is so good. Kadish. This is one of those days when I'm jealous of the Kadish is getting I'm married. I'm upset that we both found other I life know, partners know, right? before we met. I told, I told my wife, I go, you're so lucky you married me already. Because I'd be like, Kadish would be my arch enemy right now. I'm going to steal your woman. I'm stealing your we woman. Listen, we have 
have the partners that we have because if we were together, we'd never do anything but sit in our underwear on the couch watching TV and drinking. You guys want to have a key party? <laughs> Maybe. My wife would not be down for that. You got to edit this shit out. <laughs> So people on Twitter who are listening right now, don't say this. <laughs> I forgot. We're live on Twitter. Oh my god, that's hilarious. What's, what Mix, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's all will now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the oh, vodka shit. talking. Yeah. God, I'm sweating. I'm laughing so much. He gets horny when he drinks. Horny. The vodka. Horny. The vodka is what does it. It's like I can't do vodka anymore. <laughs> all right, Kadish, what's your favorite part of this movie? So we already talked about the split scene, <laughs> yeah. But one of my one of the things that stood out to me when we were watching this, and again, I had not seen this movie before. What first time watch? Yeah, for first me. time watch. Yeah. No way, yeah. dude. That's yep. awesome. Um, I I actually I haven't seen a lot of Jean Claude Van Damme's movies, but um, when the credits were rolling at the beginning, it came up. The screenwriter's name was Kitty Chalmers. And when I saw that name pop up. He was up, like, that's got to be a fake name. Yeah, I, I, I was like, that can't be a real name. And it turns out Kitty. it wasn't a real name. Uh -huh. Because Albert Pion, the director, uh, used that as a pseudonym uh, to hide the fact that he wrote this movie. Oh, very sly. Yeah. Was he embarrassed? <laughs> this thing's a classic. Yeah, I don't know He's why. He's like, I'm going to pretend like I'm a woman. Therefore, it's all right if I put all these titties in my movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know why he chose to write it under a pseudonym. But like the, the entire movie, I, I was sitting there, I was like, just stewing on it. I was like, Kitty Chalmers. No, <laughs> that's not real. And, 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 when I, and when I did my research for this movie, I, I was like, I was like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew that wasn't a real name. I mean, the, the opening credits, he was like, we're just sitting there watching the living room's quiet. I'm sipping on a cocktail, obviously. And, and all of a sudden he's like, Kitty Chalmers. <laughs> and he was like fixated. I was. It was like a mantra the rest of the night. Kitty Chalmers. He just keeps saying it over and over again. I couldn't let go. He would not like, rest like until Dick he... Tracy. Yeah, he was I, like, I gotta get to the bottom of this. He puts his fedora on. I, I gotta come up with some cool nickname like that. Some <laughs> it's, nickname. But it's ridiculous because you and I, Kadish, both use pseudonyms for several things that we do. Well, yeah, but it, you know, it, it, it's very rare that someone would hide their name on a screenplay credit. Um, unless the movie was so bad that they didn't want to be associated with it, but his name was already associated with the movie, so it's like, why didn't he just take the writing credit? He was like, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of my direction, but I, I would prefer if people didn't think I wrote this story. Like I did the best that I could with oh, what I had. Yeah. And and it's a shame because he was like um, this um, Albert Pion guy. He was actually a very prolific director during the '80s, and then he got like multiple sclerosis, and he's having he's had a really hard time to like you know actually make movies. Um, you know, modern day, and he does like you know very independent direct video stuff now. Hmm. Um, but uh, I, I this mo this movie I would rate as so bad it's good. Yes, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. so I I, totally I, I had I had fun watching it. Wow, Alex, why do you hate joy? <laughs> you just hate fun, sir. Yeah. I just I I'm kind of like what normally vader says about movies like this, like Chopping Mall and things like that. He's like, I'm tired of watching these shitty movies with no budget. <laughs> That's kind of what killed me for this movie. I was like, I just, I, I'm okay with the story. I'm okay with the cheesiness of the fight scenes and the villain and all that stuff. I'm down for that. But there was just some element of it that it was like taking me out of the movie. I couldn't enjoy it because I was seeing, literally seeing, oh, they built that stage or, oh, they reused that. I don't know. My brain was in a wrong place to be able to enjoy a so bad it's you good movie. You weren't drinking, were you? I was not drinking. <laughs> you were alone. And I was alone, yeah. So That's there's no multiple, way to live your life, bro. Th th it's consistently the movies that you love are the ones I hate because mm -hmm. I'm watching them by myself and mm -hmm. I'm like, God, this is terrible. But when I listen to you and Matt sometimes talk about these movies that are so we bad, we still have joy in our hearts. <laughs> right? I still, I have three kids, Jude. <laughs> well, there's no joy. You can fix that. You know, right? you snip, snip, and not have. Oh, anymore. okay, all right. I, it sounded like you were saying, "Yeah, your well, kids, just get rid of your that was, kids." That was I the thought vodka. he was going to say, "Like, start going Batman on her instead of." No, no, no. Start, start palm firing. <laughs> yeah, just use your fingers. Ooh. It's okay. All right, let's yeah. give this movie a rating. Fingers have never gotten anyone pregnant. What do you got? <laughs> that you know of. Wow, that's good. I'll the more you know. <laughs> Vader. I've gotten fingered a lot. I've only been pregnant <laughs> once. <laughs> Dirty. You can't say that shit. I can say whatever I want. Well, she's, she's talking about pond farming. So. Oh, God. Okay. 
No, nope, they're not there yet. <laughs> Stop. Like, oh, there's there's the robot head. Oh That's my so god. So weird. The it's eye terrible. thing is so weird. Ugh. All right. Matt, give this give this we're, movie a rating. We're off the rails. We today. are off the rails today. <laughs> it's all right. This is the best shows. <laughs> um, you want me to give this thing a rating? Yeah, what do you got for us? Um, uh, so bad it's good movies. So those are those are on a little different scale. That's the no. genre. Um, um, rate it for Jean Claude Van Damme movies. Van Damme mm. movies? Yes. Oh, it's where weird. where it's, is this? So listen, I've probably watched this movie. Of the Van of the Van Damme library, I've probably watched this one the most. Really? Yes. Wow, I, and I know it's weird. Right? It is very I weird. I think I've seen this one more than Bloodsport. Good wow. lord. Yeah, it's, it's it's good. Well, it's in my zone. No man, no judgment. It's like, <laughs> I'm impressed. I love apocalypse movies. I love it's like I'm one of these weirdos that like was hoping like COVID would like really fuck things up <laughs> because I, I wanted to like be out in the desert with my shoulder pads and my jeep. <laughs> he started making chain mail I did, I did, yeah. during quarantine. During quarantine, got, he's sitting I, in his I, living room. I got my hockey mask at home. I was going to like start lifting weights and shit. It was, it was get some cool sunglasses over my hockey mask. Yeah. I was going to like recruit you guys into my biker gang and stuff. It was going to be awesome. Yeah, we were, we were going to like hoard gasoline. That's right. It's like, <laughs> Put it in plastic bags and walk it to our. I, house. I'd be all up there. If you only do my power, <laughs> if you don't join my group, I will come fuck you up. I will crucify you on the side of the road. So yeah, basically, yeah, can... like this movie represents like what you want your life. To oh, kind of weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, no, I mean, you want, no, be, you want to be Fender? He's like, Fender. Man, yeah. I would rather be Fender than be punching a fucking clock every day <laughs> you, 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 for real you yeah. have no idea why would i want to fix the world yeah, i like let, the world the way let it the is. world burn <laughs> yeah it's like and, and most people are sh- you are a super villain they're, they're sh- I, I am <laughs> i he, really he, he am is vader it's amazing there's a reason dude, he there's, took there's, vader's man darth vader was my hero he's a mass murderer dude it's weird it's like why my mom was all like why do you like this guy i was like I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, man. I don't know. I just, I just love this movie. Okay. I, I'm, I'm gonna give it a, a four, four Van Dams. Okay. okay. I thought you were gonna say five for no, 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 no. Okay, okay. No, no, no. But it, yeah, four Van Dams for me. I, I just, there's just, it's goofy. It's fun. It's, it's not good. I, it's really not a good movie, but it's a fun movie. For okay. Me. You know. So yeah. All right. There yeah. it is. Jude, how about you? Um, I agree. Um, with you. my life partner over here. Later. Um, <laughs> You're going to make us mortal enemies pretty soon. Um, I, I love this movie and I think it's great. And uh, where it stands for me as far as like where it is like in my love of Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, it's probably tied for third place of my all-time favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Okay. Um, so I will give it uh three out of five um, apocalyptic plagues. Nice. Three out of five, solid. All right, Kadish, how about you, buddy? This movie was quite an experience for me. (laughs) I did really enjoy it, even though I acknowledge it's a very bad movie. Um, I give it uh, um, three split kicks out of five. Three out of five. Yeah. All right, this is a one-star crap fest, guys. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not either. You're crazy. It's a one-star crap fest. The shoestring budget, you. the goofy slow motion fight scenes, the Listen, terrible one-note villain. You can say anything you like. Me and the mats are out of here. I'm all right. I'm what, all, right. What, what all about, right. what about that boot knife? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like flips out. I awesome. want a boot knife. I have several <laughs> pairs of boots. I need knives in all of them. <laughs> This is a terrible movie. I'm gonna start practicing splits. But I do, I do love the fact that you guys love it so much. It's a lot of fun. It's more fun <laughs> listening to you guys talk about it than it was watching. I don't want to talk about movies with you anymore. If you're gonna watch them alone and sober. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really enjoyed, bringing me I over, enjoyed, man. I enjoyed this movie sober. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. You can. Uh, he can't. I can't. I have a hard time. I, I, I was sober when I watched. Well, it. You're yeah. always sober. <laughs> you still have joy in your heart. You have Listen, me, and yeah. I live with you, and I bring the joy. Yeah, but you truly love Vader. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, if, if, if we, who cares? <laughs> Who's talking about love? I'm talking about joy. If we ever rent a movie and have a movie night, yeah. a salty dinner movie night, uh, which I ask you guys to do every fucking week. This is going to be one of the movies. Cyborg, absolutely. I kind of want to see the sequel and Deathstalker three and four. Oh yeah, absolutely. Deathstalker for sure. All right, guys, that's our discussion for Cyborg. Go check it out; it's available. I think you can find it on iTunes or not iTunes, but uh, uh, it's on Amazon. Is it on Amazon too? And it's, I think we're watching it on YouTube right now. Are we? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I know, it's pretty pixelated. Yeah. It's a bit, <laughs> the look quality is a little bit lower, but you can find it on YouTube if you want to watch it. Yeah. All right, uh, before just we get- adds to it, yeah, adds just, to the charm. Just adds to the charm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, before we move on to our next movie, which is gonna be Kickboxer, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you'd like to support the podcast, go to saltynerdstore.com. There you can get our awesome merch. And we have a new shirt that we're gonna promote this month. And it's going to be about that jar of corks over there in the corner. It's a limited edition shirt. Limited edition, this month only. Get the corky short, go to short, go to corky shirt go to saltynerdstore.com you can grab that and uh it's gonna be awesome guys it's just a little bit of a nod and a wink to the uh, events of sunday that the controversy have have garnished so many new sub yes, subscribers the, the indiana jones five controversy Woo! <laughs> good times guys all right uh, saltynerdstore.com help support the podcast go there grab the merch everything that you guys give us goes back into the podcast so we can get a better studio apparently <laughs> yeah, yeah so we can get it up to man gold standards <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, All love, right. I love this studio. This is a great. This studio. is a great. St- I, don't know, I don't have a problem with it. Batman's right over there in my Batman's corner. Batman's got his weird Mardi Gras mask on. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Studios. That's his, that's his eyes wide shut mask. Oh. Studios bad. Yeah, if, if, if you want to see it, go to his OnlyFans. Yeah, it's bulletproof package. Yeah. <laughs> Batman's that's, got OnlyFans, guys. That's so weird, dude. I swear. <laughs> All right, let's get back into it. The next movie on our list today is Kickboxer. Take it away, Jude. All right, 1989 Kickboxer. Rated R with a runtime of one hour, 37 minutes with a budget of $1.5 million. What do you think this brought into the box office? Mm, 15 million. Vader? I'm agreeing with Alex a lot today. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go 15 to 17. Right 14.6 million dollars. Nice. Very close. good guess. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you ready for the stuff? That's, a, that's yeah. a lot of money in 80s dollars. It is, so, yeah. especially, yeah. Go All for right. it, Jude. When the American kickboxing champion travels to Bangkok to defend his title, he realizes the Thai take kickboxing to a whole other level. He ends up paralyzed and tossed out on the street, vowing to ex- exact vengeance for his big brother, Jean-Claude Van Damme trains to fight Tong Po, the Thai champ and local rapist. <laughs> Kurt slash Jean-Claude falls for the niece of his Muay Thai trainer, hoping to throw Kurt off his game the local bad guys kidnap his love and his brother before the fight, but nothing can stop the Nok Sum Kao. With splits, kicks, and fists full of glass, the two fighters battle for honor, vengeance, and glory. I freaking love this movie. Nok Sum Kao. Nok Sum Kao. Nok Sum Kao. Nok Sum Kao. This is my number two all-time favorite Jean-Claude Van Damme really? movie. Dude, wow. this movie is so freaking good. I mean, Bloodsport's my favorite, <clears throat> obviously. So this movie, to me, is like, Two separate things. What do you mean? It's like I hated the first thirty minutes of this movie. What? Oh, because his brother's a dickhead. His brother's a total yeah. douche. Uh, well, it's just like I, I was, was kind of glad he got his ass kicked and because like, he deserved it. He's like yeah. jealous and in a wheelchair the whole yeah. movie. It's kind of a downer. Like, yeah, but you know, once <laughs> once we got to once we got to the trainer. Yeah, yeah. I, I was into this movie. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I'll admit I haven't watched this movie in a long time. It's no cyborg, okay? But <laughs> it's just um. I did once, once the, once, once the brother gets his ass kicked, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm in. Okay. That's when this movie starts for me. Yeah. That's about, when the, about that's, 20 minutes in. That's yeah, when the plot yeah. engages. The only now, thing that I didn't get for this movie that I wished I had was like the scene in Bloodsport where he's like, okay, USA. After the brother gets paralyzed, I really wanted someone to be like, oh, not good USA. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of felt like this is like Bloodsport 2.0. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. I kind of like, okay, so Bloodsport was successful, so let's do something very similar. Yes. And have it be just, as, I think it's, this is just as good for me. I, I love everything about this movie. It was a ton of fun. The plot was great. The characters were awesome. The Muay Thai trainer in the woods, love that dude. He's hilarious. The, the only thing that could have made this movie better was if they had Bolo Young play the bad dude. Mm. Yes. And but, I kept, but, I kept you know. thinking that he was... The bad guy and then when I was watching no, it, I was no. like, that is not Bolo Young. <laughs> I love that dude though. He looks like he was ripped He's straight great. out oh, of Mortal Kombat. He's great. He really was. You know who else I needed in this? You ever been with a big man? Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Donald, yes. Donald yes. Gibb yeah, yeah, needed yeah. to be in this movie. Would have been amazing. Oh god. Yeah. It would have been tied for number one for me. Okay. Donald <laughs> Gibb had yeah, yeah, he yeah. should have played Winston. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. the ex uh was it military guy? Yeah. That would have been hundred really percent. Cool. Yeah. Probably. That would have been awesome. Then we would have made it this like weird like blood sport universe. Yes. Yeah. But, that would have been awesome. But, but you know what's funny? So Mike, Michael Kissy, who um, played um, Tong Po in this movie, mm-hmm. so he was like childhood friends with Jean-Claude Van Damme, and, and he was originally brought on as a technical advisor and choreographer for the fight scenes. Mm. 
Um, but, um, you, you know, he's such a big guy that uh, the production, when they were looking for the bad guy, he was like, he was like, hey, why not use, you know, Michael Kissy? And so um, they actually made, because uh, the actor is Moroccan, they actually made him put makeup on to make him look more Asian oh. uh, in this movie. And, huh. and what's funny is that it's well known that the character of Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat was modeled after um, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking that the same design team might have taken um, Michael Kissy's look from this movie and made Goro from that. Oh, yeah, I could totally see 100%. that. 100%. Even his fighting yeah. style, when he's got his fists like up in the air and he's just, like he's ready to roll. Yeah, I, think, I think that's a legit fighting style yeah, that they yeah. use over there. I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not up on my fighting stances and stuff, but it looks real. I would assume that you it know, is. Because, so. I mean, these guys are all like... John Claude Van Damme is a legit know, martial you know, artist. You know, I he, mean, he, we don't really get much out of him as far as like dialogue, but he has so oh. much to like. There's a rich character in there. Yeah. What, in, what in, was in, that, in a, that line that you told me about? Uh, <laughs> like, like you bleed like my Ling. You bleed like my Ling. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. she, you know she good a, fuck a weird that. fucking thing about my friendship with Tom. We routinely say that to each other. All, I texted him the other day. I was like, hey. You believe he's like like my link. <laughs> <laughs> this movie did take a really dark turn. Yeah, it's I was super not rapey. Yeah, I was not expecting it's that. She's like, yes, I was raped, but you can't tell him because the fight is more important. <laughs> but but, but uh, yeah, and like it, he wins and it and it fixes her rape. It, it, yeah, it, it turns into a barbarian movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, very much oh, so. Yeah. yeah, it was super weird. I did not expect that to happen. So like halfway through the movie, maybe even a little bit more than halfway through. Jean Claude is they're getting harassed by um, what's Freddie? What's his name? Freddie Lee? Yes. Freddie Lee's like organization. He's like the triad in the area, the mobster. And he's harassing them to try to get them to off their game so he won't win the fight. Mm -hmm. And because and, Tong Po is very important yes, to the community. Yes. And so they kidnap the they kidnap the love interest in the movie and they go and they just they, they just, he just, they, he just straight up rapes her. Rapes yeah. her right in yeah. front like yeah. But, yeah, this is what I'm going to uh, do. He wasn't the only one. They, they ran a train on him. Yeah, that's so what? dark. I missed that. Yeah, yeah. No, the, 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 the two henchmen who dragged was her that, in. That was implied? They, they got, well, when um, her uncle goes in and avenges her rape mm -hmm. against the two guys that did it at the end when Winston shows up and stuff like that. Yeah, he, he shoves like, a hook yeah, up he, the dude's he literally butt. literally shoves a meat hook up, up the guy. And he's like, and now, what's, his, what's her name? My Ling. My, my Ling. Ling. Now My Ling is avenged. And I was like. God, it's man, also dude. implied that she, like, she had never even had sex before. Yeah. Not that rape what? is sex at all, but the, the fact that he says you bleed like my ling really implies that she, she was had a never virgin. had sex wow. before. Yeah. Dude, yeah. this movie went dark, it's dude. Brutal. It's, it's brutally it's dark. Brutal. <laughs> and, and you know what's funny is, is that the guy who plays his brother, the kickboxing champion, his name's Dennis Alexo. He was a world heavy or a world light heavyweight um, and cruiserweight kickboxing champion in real life. Yeah. Nice. And, and and he has the most amazing mullet I think I've ever oh, seen. Oh, dude, the mullet. Oh, absolutely. And that mustache? Mm, mm -hmm. Give me he's, more. he's got the mullet with the cop stash. And yep. he's, <laughs> yes. He's a total douche. He's rocking the he, 80s. He, he played it pretty well. Like, yeah. if I didn't know he was an athlete, I'd be like, are you a cop? <laughs> <laughs> he was either a cop or a porn star. Yeah, right? one of the so, two. Maybe yeah. both. Uh -huh. but, but he was an actual kickboxing champion. But yeah, this I had a ton of fun with this movie. I, I didn't I don't have any gripes with it whatsoever. It was it's it's classic Jean Claude Van Damme that oh this is the one where he dances. We gotta talk about oh, the God. dance scene. I was texting Jude this week, <laughs> you know, flirting with her, trying to steal her from Matt. <laughs> and she's all like sending me the the picture of him pelvic thrusting. I'm like, well, that's Dude, with the with the That's how Vader and I that's, flirt. That's, <laughs> texting <laughs> That's really inappropriate, dude. <laughs> Gifts of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Jean-Claude Van Damme's package. Is it getting it for you? That's what shit you, I send to him. What are, you, what are you telling me right now? <laughs> God damn it, dude. Oh, so no, weird. None of that happened. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, but that, that scene in this movie, that's one of Jean-Claude's biggest memes. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the dance scene in this, in this. I've seen this movie a lot. Don't fucking test it. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. His outfit was amazing. But I love the fact that his trainer was like, I'm going to put this guy to the test. I'm going to mm -hmm. take him to the bar. I'm going to get, get him drunk. Get him completely blitz drunk uh -huh. and then sick the mafia on him uh -huh. to prove that my training works. Watch his reflexes. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, dude. Not Amazing. only can he fight, but he can keep the rhythm. While that he's was fighting. the. <laughs> he's you know, like. <laughs> if, if I had a shot of tequila, I'd be dancing in front of the camera. Oh, God. <laughs> Remind me not to bring tequila. Don't ever bring tequila to me. <laughs> Because it's the it'll be nasty. You want a little tequila? Because I'd rather you do it in the house. <laughs> it was such a fun, goofy scene. I mean, he's all like 
<laughs> oh, he's moving, dude. Jean Claude got it. Yeah, he's like he's got it going oh, on. Yeah, he's it's like that. clapping for himself, <laughs> snapping his fingers. It's so good. Mm -hmm. He plays a really good drunk guy. I wonder if he was drinking during that scene though. Yeah, he might have been doing other stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> I, like this, this movie was shot in Thailand and Hong Kong. Nice. And I if figured you, it looked like it was really and there. If you remember, I bet cocaine in Hong Kong is awesome. If if you remember when we were, did our last Jean Claude Van Damme, uh, we talked about how he disappeared from the set of, set of Street Fighter for like a month uh, because oh he went back to Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah, they, they hired a guy to keep an eye on him, and he ended up partying with them, yeah. and they both disappeared. Yeah. Wow. John Claude, dude. Oh, dude, man. You, 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 can't, you can't disappear in Bangkok, I just, I man. love that guy. Apparently, Jean Claude can. B disappearing in Bangkok is not He good. was there the whole time. He was just doing a split above you, and you couldn't see him. He'll, he'll come back with a tattoo on his face. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme. A tattoo. Yeah. You ever seen Time Cop? <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> gosh man this movie can, is awesome a, can we talk about the uh the, the the stretching scene yes yes that was painful that, to watch that, 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 that was, that like, was strange, strangely sexual it was weird <laughs> weird right wait, like, which the one where when, he's, when got he's those... like tied up to the ropes yeah and and the master oh, okay, is like stretching okay. his ass out so we yeah, can and you can hear the freaking like yeah. the stretching of the muscles when, when i think about van damme i always think about that scene for some reason oh gosh yeah. it looks like it hurts but you know it doesn't because he can probably touch his ankles to his ears and realize, <laughs> you know it's just it's, it was just but that's this classic van damme stuff yeah what is it with the splits in this guy because he's like the only one who can do it he, yeah that's his thing uh, that's yeah. how he got famous this he is literally Colin did a split in front of who hips? was it some director no he was did walking a, he down did a, the street a high kick or but something. it was basically a split yeah. but he was still standing on one leg yeah i think he has triple jointed hips it's possible i, I wonder if he could still do it today well, he, first of all he calls it his gift Mm. <laughs> and second of all, he used it to keep a helicopter from escaping. He <laughs> saved the oh world with those yes. splits. He did. God, that show is so good. And if you don't know what we're talking about, you need to watch uh, Jean-Claude Van Johnson. It's on Amazon Prime. Go check it out. All right. Uh, the final battle with the iconic glass knuckles. Yes. Let's talk about that for a minute. Oh, and then he has them taken off. And oh, just yeah. Go bare knuckles yes. at each other. Because he was losing. With the like glass? That's, that's what really surprised me. Because if you follow the typical sports movie slash Rocky Balboa, you lose the first fight, mm -hmm. and then you come back and you win. It's the underdog story. Every sports movie ever. Mm -hmm. it's this the, one. It's the formula. Well, yeah, exactly. This is kind of like coming or uh, Rocky Four, right? It, it, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Apollo Creed dies. You yeah, know, you his, know, his you, buddy. Some, gets, something bad happens. You go have some training montages. Yep. And you have a cool fight, it's and every, then the good guy wins. Every sports yeah. movie is the same. Oh, I wish that Tong Po had said, I must break you. <laughs> he probably did in, in, in Taiwanese. Yeah, the, the, the Taiwanian? Yeah. The, the introduction to Tong Po, um, he's, he's beating up a, my favorite part of the movie. A, a load-bearing pillar <laughs> mm -hmm. in his training. <laughs> he's just, giving just it like, hell. Just like and concrete. then he turns around, and he faces Jean-Claude Van Damme, and he just like puts his hands together, and he makes like, the international symbol for I'm going to break you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. It's amazing. Amazing. I will break you. you are I, a stick of celery at break. <laughs> oh, so tough. Wow. It's good stuff. I would do things. I would tell us. These movies get Jude's engine ready. I, I see get that. so horned up. <laughs> it's like tequila for Vader. It, it, I, you, it, you throw in a fucking karate movie, and I'm like, uh, oh, man. Uh, I need to be touched. Or touched. What, and, what do I do with my hands? And, and, and you throw in the like the world. Yeah, yeah. You throw in the world's best ponytail, and it's over. It's the world's best ponytail. <laughs> yeah, that is an epic ponytail. But I think you're right, though, Kadish. They definitely ripped that off for, for, uh, for girl, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, for girl. And, and um, Chuck Norris was supposed to be the, the star of this movie movie originally get out of here yeah. and because of the success of blood sport they were like we can get john claude van damme for cheaper what was chuck's problem he, I don't, he, I he, like, okay. he literally had too many offers was this when they were making walker texas ranger? i don't no, dude this is, this is still the 80s i think walker texas ranger was in the 90s right yeah I, um, I have, and I don't know if if this was made at a point in Chuck Norris's life where he had started taking acting lessons yet. But this is this is magic and it's golden. And no, please, no one remake it and don't recast it and leave it the fuck alone yeah. because it's amazing and I love it. Please don't take my joy. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to I, again, like going through these old '80s movies and seeing like the influence of like where Chuck Norris was in his career. I I don't understand how he's famous. He's, he's making shit like the Octagon right hey, now. Hey man, it's, you need to cool it because he's gonna come for you. I know. I don't want to trash. He's probably standing behind that Batman statue <laughs> right now, listening to you. No, just th shut up. So th this movie was 1989, so it was shot in 1988. Octagon was 1980. Okay. Eight so, years before. Okay. I, I still, I'm having a hard time understanding where, where 
Chuck Norris came from. Yeah. His management company was weird. <laughs> it's very strange. Bad decisions, man. I'm I'm happy that Jean Claude was in. We this should movie, do a though. timeline of like Jean Claude Van Damme's career and, <laughs> and Chuck Norris's. And like just a graph. See what they did at the same <laughs> Listen, time. I am, I am so happy Van Damme made these movies and not Chuck. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah, hundred mm percent. -mm. But I, I think the villain in this one is probably one of my favorite Jean Claude villains. Tong Po. He's so badass, and he's got such an iconic like style and stance, yeah. and you know yeah. you just don't want to mess with him. You, you, no. you look at the dude and you go, "No, yeah, no, I ain't gonna mess with that dude." <laughs> <No>. <laughs> His dickhead uh -uh. brother is like, "Oh, whatever, I can take him. I'm the champ." You guys. And Shin, Tong Po not only kicks his ass, he paralyzes him, and then he takes that belt and he rips it in half yes. because that meant nothing. Yes, oh. he was in it for the glory of the kill. Yeah, That's right. and Tong Po was actually in. Blood sport was he yeah he was, was he one, one of the fighters yeah he was one of the fighters oh i didn't know that like he, he he's actually like this the jean claude van damme's Finn thorson like he just <laughs> he, he's, he's friend so he's shown up in like a ton of you, jean claude you van damme you movies. you have lived for saying the words Finn thorson it's you've the, been waiting this whole week to say it i, I, I was counting down We're it's gonna, the only name he actually knows how to pronounce properly <laughs> yeah. oh my god you're right we got we gotta have a a, a show d dedicated to Sven. we should we should have a show dedicated to all of the names that Kadish has mangled. <laughs> Just like clip it's, after clip you, of him you, saying you will, wrong you be things. Able to, so no. there's this not is, enough time in the world. This is a bit of a tangent. You can cut it out if you want. Okay. But Sven Thorson movies. Uh, total, re no. Um, Running Man. Running, Running man. man. What else is there? Literally every Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everything with Arnold in it. Hard Target, he was in. Ter Terminator? But, but he was like really prominent in in Running Man, right? Because he, yeah. oh, he was for one sure. of the yeah. yeah yeah he was the guy who was gonna go and off I, and find steroids. I think his name in each movie is still Sven Thorson. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't, they don't even give it. him a name. They're just like yeah, have we watched Running Man Sven for the Thorson show. Do that yeah, and yeah, call him Sven Running Thorson. Man. It was for part of uh, Schwarzenegger was, September. Was it an audio show? Yeah. Yeah. It was well, before we, we, did we need to redo. We need to redo it. Okay. We need to redo that one because I love that movie. When we'll do it with Total Recall. All right, let's move on. Give me your favorite moment and or your rating for this for this movie for kickboxer who are you going to you you going to me yes sir he's looking at you i know i i always hate it when he asks me my favorite moments because i'm never prepared it's literally part of the show i, I know I, I need to start three well, times i'm gonna have week. to start we, what's my favorite we, moment of this movie we, we've, we've done 65 of these episodes <laughs> I, I know and he's right? literally done it for every single one <laughs> so i want your favorite episode part do you want to do you want to do me first that um, way vader has time no to no it's fine it's fine um, i meant like I, I, I already said my favorite part is when he gets stretched. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like, gotcha. it's just kind of iconic. I, lo I love montages. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, and, workout and montages are awesome. Workout montages are cool, man. It's very <laughs> 80s. Yes, very much you know, so. I mean, but, you know, anything after the first 30 minutes of this movie, I'm kind of into. Okay, cool. And, uh, so on a, on a scale of uh, Van Damme movies. Am what, I giving us a Van Damme rating? Yeah, where do you go? Uh, three and a half. And I know it's like that's, it's, that's solid. It's solid. It's you know a lot of people love this movie. I'm yeah. sure you guys probably like it more than I do. Um, I do not like this movie as much as Bloodsport or Cyborg. <gasps> Blood, Cyborg really, dude. Cyborg is so high for me. So, I love that movie. Crazy. It's so goofy. <laughs> um, Bloodsport is my first love for Van Damme movies, and it's very similar to this movie. It really is. Um, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go like what did I say three and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a three and a half. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, Jude, how about you? Favorite moment and give us a, uh, a rating. My favorite moment is when we first see Tung Po and he's beating the shit out of uh, just a part of the wall. Mm -hmm. And he turns around and he gives him that look. And he's like, what? Um, it, it's, it's just like such a great introduction to this badass character. And, and Jean-Claude Van Damme is like, oh shit, my brother's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, this is my my second favorite Jean Claude Van Damme movie wow. of all of all time. Bloodsport's number one. Bloodsport is my my number one love. That's my boo, nice. and this is my side <laughs> bitch. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna give it um, four out of five. Strong, uh, very sexy strong. bar tank top dances. There you go. <laughs> nice. All right, Kate, it's your turn. So um, I don't like this movie as much as the rest of you. That's okay. But uh, the ending. I still love you. The, the ending fight scene where it looks like it's something out of Conan the Barbarian, <laughs> where they've got like the stone pit with like snake sculptures yeah. mm -hmm. and Jean-Claude and Tong Pao are wearing like adult diapers. And they got ropes and, tied to their hands. <laughs> yeah. And, and glass and, like, and stuff that yeah, they've dipped their pitch in. Yeah, they've they got like resin on their fists with like glass, broken glass yeah. on it. Yeah. And, and it, it looks like, like, like two 
grown make, men in baby man, diapers like, fighting. You're them. making me horny, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like it, it was so over the top and ridiculous. It was kind of like that that '80s thing where it's like, this is what Asian cultures do. <laughs> 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 um, so like that whole thing, I love like the pageantry of it and like how over the top it was. But I, I think my favorite moment in the movie is when he first meets his future sensei who, who's j the only one in thailand crazy enough to teach him muay thai mm -hmm. oh yeah everybody and, laughs him right out of the studio yeah. hey man and, that muay thai is a real thing yeah that's, that's yeah. Some good stuff and there, there's a moment there where the guy just like jumps up and like does like four or five kicks like on either side of jean-claude's head mm -hmm. and then comes back down it lasts like a split second jean-claude's like what just happened <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I was like this guy is is a cross between mr miyagi and yoda yep. except yeah. he speaks way better than either of them mm -hmm. um, and uh and like the the crazy um father slash teacher in the in the forest and duel to the death oh yeah. yeah yeah for sure i was getting those vibes off of him <laughs> i could see that yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's like the, the weird master who lives in the wilderness. Yes. Um, but uh, like him and Winston were kind of interesting to me because Winston's like the, this this guy who's just watching like the, the kickboxing fight. He was an American expat who had like a Trump traumatic like war experience. And so like he was trying to like bury like his past behind him. Mm -hmm. And he ends up kind of helping out Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, yeah, we didn't even hardly talk about him. Winston yeah. was pretty cool. He was a pretty fun but he was, He's very sparse in the movie though. He shows up at key moments. He's so crazy. He's so oh, he's, wild. He's a partier. Well, well, he's well, like, yeah. you're going to ruin this for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be on the down low. What, what's funny about his character is, is like, he's trying to get away from like all like the violence from his past. And then at the end, he just comes in and kills everyone <laughs> with a uh, freaking rocket yeah. launcher. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and like the master's like, like, what took you so long? Like, like, like when he shows up, like he's all like in silhouette and stuff. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's Winston. That's mm -hmm. what I'm, I mean, I love Winston, but I think if that was Donald Gibb, God, oh, it would have been damn perfect. it, dude. That would have been amazing. Uh, nothing against the actor who played the no, character. No, no, he was good. Nothing against him, but like just having Donald Gibb come I in. just pictured Donald Gibb uh, holding a rocket launcher and my vagina clenched. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jude. <laughs> God, I love you so much. It is unreal. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, for my favorite moment, oh, honest, I, I didn't get. Oh, you didn't. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead. ahead. Yeah. So a lot of really fantastic, uh, you know, um, Jean Claude Van Damme moments in this. You had the dancing meme and. Mm -hmm and all that stuff. So I, I would probably give it two and a half or three uh, split kicks. So three, this one. three, three split. Kicks. We'll go with the higher one. We're going to we'll go, go with three. high. Yeah. 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 Okay. You can't, you can't do any half points when it's split kicks. You need both legs. Uh, my favorite moment is actually the, uh, the fighting training montage for Jean-Claude with his, my with his master. That's my, my favorite. Yeah, my favorite go. moment in this movie is the training montage. I love them. You put them in any sports movie in the 80s, and they're amazing. I love the backdrop. The fact that they actually went to the location, and it's not some, like, matte painting, mm -hmm. that really sells it for me. I love it. Montages are important. When he's fighting with the glowing sticks, I was like, yeah. God damn, dude. Was, oh, yeah. I also like that moment where he has his, his, like, Hulk out moment during the fight. where Oh, he kicks oh, the tree? Yeah. Well, well, he flashes back to, um, you know, this weird, like, warriors fighting in the temple. Yes. And then, like, a weird eagle thing where it's like, Meh. <laughs> it's a freaking eagle, bro. <laughs> it's amazing. The eagle was very symbolic of something. <laughs> I, I don't really know what. The warrior but, spirit. Yeah, something. I, oh, I love I it. I was dude. like, I was like, what's what's the eagle all wanted, about? I don't get it. <laughs> I'd like to have <laughs> it. I, I just overdub like America. Yeah. <laughs> just, well, well, you know what's funny is like, uh, so Jean Claude Van Damme, his brother, is this kickboxer, and the guy. Has an American accent. Jean Claude uh -huh. Van Damme has a French yeah. accent. Yeah. Uh -huh. French accent. And I don't know like, what you're doing. They like squeeze in, and in like the beginning of the movie, they're like, "Oh, uh, you had it so lucky living in Europe with mom." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they actually addressed that where they said that their parents split up. The mom took Jean Claude to Europe and raised him there, and the dad kept, stayed in America with this guy. <laughs> and they have this hey. like adorably awkward moment in a park where they're sparring and they're like i missed you <laughs> growing up without you in america yeah and, and, the, and the funny thing is in that scene you can see like everyone behind them just watching them shoot that movie uh-huh it, it, it's like they were no. like oh there's being a, a movie with jean-claude van damme yeah, that let's wasn't, all sit here they weren't extras they were just people <laughs> yeah yeah they were people in the park watching them shoot a movie and it, it just looks like people in the background watching them sparring but it's very obvious that the crowd is there because they're filming uh -huh. yeah that looked like that all right, so my favorite moment is the fighting montage, and I have to give this movie a oh, God, dude, it's so good. I, be it's nice. Gotta be a four. A four? Like it's gotta be a four. Yeah. I can't give it a three. Three's too low. You're putting this up there with Cyborg. Mm. 
No, Cyborg was a one star oh, crap man. fest. <laughs> You see what we have to deal with. This, on this is show? blood sport level good. No, it's like, not. Yes, it is. It's close, but it, not it's. Close. I mean, it's this movie right there. For, get out of here. I'm just <laughs> gesturing. This movie for me is what Cyborg is for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm I was. I think this may have been the first time I've ever watched this movie all the way through from start to finish. I've seen clips. I'm I've really seen. Proud of you. I've seen the fight scenes on YouTube and whatnot, and when people reference it and stuff, I get it. Yeah, you know, I've seen the dipping of hands in the glass. But I've never sat down and watched it from start to finish. And this was freaking great. Yeah. There's nothing. I don't hate anything about it. It's a four out of five. Great movie. Okay. All right, guys. That's it. That's our discussion for Kickboxer. My heart just grew four, ties, four <laughs> sizes too big. Stay tuned. The last movie we're going to be talking about today is... Double Impact. Double, Double Impact. impact. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you'd like to support the podcast, go to saltynerddiscord.com and you can access our Discord server and chat about movies. We have several different uh, chat rooms open for spoiler discussions about shows that are out, like Loki or something like that. And uh, also Jurassic June. I have a, a chat room dedicated to dinosaurs only. So go to our saltynerddiscord.com and uh, join our app and have a, have a nice little time hanging out with us over there. Yeah, go hang out in the dinosaur room with Alex because he's there by himself. He's <laughs> really, he is all alone. <laughs> I've got like three people that I, like dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are awesome. All right. <clears throat> the last movie on our list today is Double Impact. Double, go for it. Double the Van Damage. Double, double the Van Damage. <laughs> oh, God. This movie so, it it's sucks so, so much. What? It's not good. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> this... This had so much story. It, oh, it's amazing. It was too much story. For okay. You think it's too, compli too complicated? Com too right. convoluted. Take it away, Jude. Okay. 1991 Double Impact. Rated R with a runtime of one hour, 50 minutes. With a budget of $15 million. What do you think this brought into the box office? $15 million budget? Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, and this is lot. in the 90s now, so. Um, it's a Van Damme movie with two Van Dams in it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, $55 million. Vader? 37.8. <laughs> Had a budget of $15 million. Double the Van Damme, double the budget. $30 million. Oh, Vader was right. I went, well, mm -hmm. I wasn't. I was close. Close enough. Closer, Closer than, than me. You. Yeah. All right. right so on. listen, there was a lot going on in this movie. Yeah. So my synopsis is a little long winded. <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as Kadish doesn't do a second version of it, we'll be okay. Okay. Parents of six-month-old twins are betrayed by their business partner and gunned down. The <laughs> nanny escapes with one of the twins, Alex, who goes to a Hong Kong orphanage and becomes a petty crook, while the other twin, Chad, is raised by not Dabney Coleman in France. They move to California later and open up a karate and ballet studio. 25 years later, Chad and Frank slash not Dabney Coleman fly to Hong Kong for a little shopping and bar hopping. All the local miscreants mistake Chad for Alex, including Alex's girlfriend, who drags him to a back bar room to pop her hands inside his pink cargo shorts and silk panties, when suddenly the leather-clad twin brother he never knew he had arrives and headbutts him into unconsciousness. <laughs> Not Dabney Coleman explains they're brothers, and they agree to avenge their parents' murder together. There's a couple of boats, more pink clothes, a dilapidated building they hunker down in, a smoke bomb, a kidnapped girlfriend, and a bunch of fighting. The brothers get separated, and each takes on a different member of the gang slash businessmen responsible for the murder of their parents. Frank and the girlfriend are being held and tortured by the Zang gang. Alex fights a mullet guy in the dark, and then a thick-thighed, <laughs> red-headed gang lady, while Chad takes on Bolo Young and a bunch of barrels in a shirtless Donkey Kong match. <laughs> oh God. I'm so glad Bolo Young's in this movie. I know, right? <laughs> Finally, Alex drops Papa Zang off a crane to his death, while Chad drops a container on Griffith, the man who betrayed his parents 25 years earlier, crushing him. The boys hug and Frank's okay too. <laughs> oh God, this movie. This movie's There's amazing. so much going it's on. So I crazy. love this movie. Two Van Dams. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, One has slicked back hair and wears leather. Yeah. And you know, he's like the bad boy he's Van He's got a Dam. cigar. The other one, Chad, <laughs> he's clearly from California because oh he wears a lot of pink. Very pastel-y. Yeah. 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 A little, Those a little. pleats in that dress shirt, I was like, 
Where can I get one of those? I, knew, I was I like, knew, why is he wearing a tie on the boat? Dude, I, he I gets knew, dressed up for travel. The, fa yeah. the fashion in this movie is incredible. Oh my god, amazing! And and at one point, like the 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 evil twin, the leather clad twin, he's like to his girlfriend, he's like, you should have known that wasn't me. I would never wear silk panties. <laughs> that I knew, was funny. I knew so many dudes who dressed like that. Really? Oh god, it was the worst. Was it a Van Damme uh, here, thing? Here I am in my freaking five hundred one jeans and my flannel shirt, and I got these people. Wearing their pastel polo shirts and their <laughs> freaking shorty shorts, it was it was it was too much. And it was I, like, uh, no, at one point, no. <laughs> I think um, not. Dabney Coleman is wearing like a denim stonewashed karate gi. Mm. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. So I have to say something about this movie because having it be in the early '90s Jean Claude movie, we all like we all know that there's a little aspect of cheese to most oh, Jean Claude. Sure. Movies. There's gonna be some camp. There's uh, gonna be a little, a little bit of cheese. <laughs> so when I was going into this movie, a lot movie, of package, a lot of splits, I was a little bit of cheese. Genuinely worried that they would not be able to pull off the the twin thing, the two Jean Claudes. Mm -hmm. But this movie did exceptionally they, well. They, they did a pretty plus. good. They did exceptionally well with the body doubles and making sure that when they were on screen at the same time, mm -hmm. it didn't look too fake. Was little, I was blown away. There was yeah. a lot of over the shoulder yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. There know? was only yeah. one time where I could really tell that it was like poorly done, not poorly done, but maybe they were like a Watch little yourself. Yeah, disadvantaged <laughs> in their technology at the time. There, there was a couple of segments. One very obvious composite. It was in the car, right? Yeah. When no, they were no. sitting next to each other in the car and they looked at each other like, whoa, I can't believe that just happened. And it was like very obvious. There, there was a couple segments in the movie where they didn't have to worry about it because they went off on their own separate little adventure. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, that's part of, that's clever Absolute, writing. Yeah, clever writing sure. in there. It was very well done. Yeah. Very well done. What were you going to say, Kadish? Uh, I was going to say that uh, it wasn't in the car. That, oh. There was like a, a thing where they were sitting on a couch or a bed together. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and the compositing was very obvious. Yeah, yeah. But it only happened like one or two times. The rest of the movie was really solid. Two guys, same guy. Yeah, yeah. The okay. the, the doubling of Jean-Claude in this movie was really well done. Loved it. Um, yeah. I, I love it. If one Jean-Claude in a movie is good. Oh, God. Two Dude, is even double better. is even better. So <laughs> yeah. the introduction. I, I, wanted, I would remake this as triple impact. <laughs> That's with, with Eddie Murphy as their third brother. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. No, I Wesley Snipes. To... Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. I had to... Um, like watch it again yesterday because I was like, I have no idea what this movie's about. Really? Like That's... I've seen it before and I watched it, uh, and and then when I got I enjoyed it and then I got all all done with it and I was like, what the hell was that about? So what I think <laughs> was that this is a movie. The entire movie was built around the concept of let's do two Van Dams, let's mm -hmm. have them play twins, and then from there we'll build build a story out. Well, okay. This is actually based off of a novel. Shut up. By, by <laughs> the, the classic Alexander Dumas, who did um, Man in the Iron Mask. The what? Nice. Alex Alexander Dumas. Dumas. Yeah. Dumas. 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 It's French. Um, but Dumas. but you, you know he he, he did uh, the Man in the Iron Mask and um, Three Musketeers, the, uh, right? Is that the same Alexander? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe so. And so the book that this was based on was called The Corsican Brothers, which was basically um, you know a, a story about two brothers separated at birth who find each other as adults. And I don't think it was an action movie uh, so or anything. Parent trap? A, is, a, is this parent trap? It's essentially the same story as Man in the Iron Mask though, right? Two two children who were twins that oh, were yeah, separated. Right. He has a thing for that apparently. Uh, okay. Uh, apparently. But uh, yeah, so uh, this is based off of that novel very loosely. <laughs> um, but Jean-Claude Van Damme wanted to do this because he, you know, like he had this action star He image. was like, I love lit literature. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and he wanted a vehicle to kind of showcase a different version of him. And so like, that's how we got Chad. In this. So, so like Alex is is like the typical Jean Claude Van Damme character, mm -hmm. and then he was like, "But no, I want to play Chad." <laughs> Honestly, he pulled it off. Like as far as an acting goes, like I know, let's be real for a minute. But Jean Claude Van Damme's acting is is pretty one note. He plays the same character in all of his movies, for more or less. In pretty this much, one, pretty much. In this one, Chad I, has layers. I really felt like they he actually did a really good he job did. of making the two characters very distinctly yes. different. I, I believed. That he was two separate dudes. Yeah, hundred percent. JC, I am shocked to find out they were both played by Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> he, he, wow, <laughs> he had some massive acting range there. Yeah, it was incredible. I think so. Should have do, do should have got like Chad a, was kind of like that soy boy <laughs> California I'm, kid. I'm yeah, so, you were so, so drunk I'm right so now. So fucked up. Right now. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I, it just He's like I want to play another character who's tough but kind of a sissy. You know, <laughs> I want to be badass with you know. 
was pink, flair. Pink, <laughs> pink polo shirt. Okay, it's very good. I want to wear sick silk boxer shirt. <laughs> I, 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 I want really, to kick my own ass. <laughs> he okay. did do that in this movie. I know it was, yeah. it was awesome. Uh, I did think it, that Jeffrey Lewis was kind of interesting in this. Um, so he he's not, he's, he's not Dabdy Coleman. Was he the dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, he's, he's Uncle Frank. You know, Uncle Frank. The yeah. only movie that I know Fuck him from. Fuck you! <laughs> lie. I punch me! I, I just don't see him in that kind of role. It's weird. The only know. movie I've ever seen him in besides this one is Maverick with Mel Gibson, you where are he plays wrong, the sir, because he's also in Night of the Comet. Oh yeah, yeah. he's like the stepdad or something, and, right? No, he, he's he? one of the scientists. Oh okay, and he's in Tango and Cash. He's one of the police lieutenants. Yeah, that's right. That's You've right. seen captain. him. I have seen him. Like, 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 like <laughs> Jeffrey Lewis was literally in like over a hundred movies. He's in a yeah. million things. Huh. He's, he's yeah. like he's like one of those like Lance Henriksen era level. Yeah, character. he's in every. Yeah, he's a yeah. Sven Swarthen. <laughs> I can't say it. Sven. No, no, he's on another trying. level than Sven. Stop trying. He's on a different Don't level. Don't you dare say, say that. that. Sven Thorson. Oh God, there it is. He's Whew. so, he's so, so good smooth. At he's so good at that. <laughs> I've practiced. You've been faking, <laughs> fucking up people's names for years just so you can highlight Sven Thorson. Sven Thorson. The people in the Twitter chat are like, "What are they talking? What are they about? Ta Dude, this is a long running joke. <laughs> I got. Yeah, I should probably explain it to these new people and all the new subscribers we have. The running joke is. If you go back to our other preview previous podcasts, is Kadish is notorious for just absolutely butchering oh, people's names. I am the destroyer of words. The and destroyer. It's funny because the one name that the three of us can't fucking say <laughs> is the one that he nails. <laughs> Every Sven. 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 Sven Thorson. Sven Thorson. It's really tough. Try it. Try it at home. Yeah, just, <laughs> say it three, three times, times fast. <laughs> backwards in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he does to practice. All right. He anyway. wakes up every morning and he's like brushing his teeth and he's like, Sven Thorson. Sven Thorson. This, this Sven is what it's red, like with a. Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is what it's like with a. One sober dude and three drunks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on a drunk three All right. stream. <laughs> Back to the movie. Um, I will say that the opening scene or the opening sequence where we kind of get the backstory about how the parents die, I thought it was like really hardcore. It was they, interesting. Yeah. They, they went Bo through Bo Young gets shot through the face. Yes. Yeah. Such a bad And he's hardcore. got that milky eye for the rest of the yeah. movie. Dude, I love the fact that he's in this movie. It's so cool. He's I like know. the antagonist to Jean Claude. I, I, I wish he's I had such a great bad guy. Yeah. I wish I had a milky eye. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Get, get shot in the face once and see what happens. <laughs> no, it's really cool to see him. The, but the opening assassination of the parents was really dark and kind of like yeah. surprisingly. Yeah, it starts off really lighthearted and yeah. joking back and forth. And then all of a sudden he's like, I told you to go home. And Frank is like, I did go home. I did go home. I'm not he's following like, you. Oh, <laughs> so that's not you behind me. And he's like, ha ha. Oh shit! I'm yeah. on my way. Yeah, and it's too late, and everybody dies, and Gosh. Frank is able to rescue one of the babies, and he raises him as his own son. And yeah. this is like our intro to the movie. It's just, but that I mean, because the movie does have an aspect of like lightheartedness to it, yeah. you wouldn't expect like the assassination. Like you literally watch the dude's mother beg for her life, it's and like, then and he's so and cold. He's just like. What will happen to my babies? And Bullo Young is like, you'll never find out. You'll never out. find and he out. Just the last blows it's, your face off. Yeah. <laughs> it's like to me, it was like when the Winter Soldier killed Tony, Tony Stark's, Stark's parents. parents. Yes. And I'm like, oh, yeah. wow. That got Brutal. really dark. Yeah. <laughs> that dude's a dick. Yeah. Man. And then yeah, he's there. Was, what really kind of got me too is like, that's what, 25 years yeah. in the past is when the assassination happens. Yeah. And then that character. So we got 35 year old playing. <laughs> Van Damme playing a 20 something dude. Yeah, but he doesn't actually age the bad guy. What's his name again? William. William. Young. Mm -hmm. He doesn't actually age. He just has a scar on his face. I don't know face. what his character's name is. He, Moon. He, think, Moon. he, he was right. like just like hanging out with these mobsters when he's not training for blood sport. I guess. So, yeah. But like, how old would you say he was when he actually assassinated the parents? Willie Young? Yeah. 15. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't so age. So he's 30, he's 40 years old at the end of the movie? I think he was actually in his. 50s or something when they no filmed shit. Bloodsport, right? I might be wrong. We gotta Google that. But I remember yeah. reading that somewhere. It yeah, was, it was... Dude, dude, Bolo Young is swole, man. Yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> a, a, like, like he's just does a... not age. He's... So like that whole 25 year thing, I bought it because I was like, yeah, because he's like a thousand years old right now and he's probably still looks the same. Yeah. I don't think he speaks a lick of English. That's okay. He doesn't need to. Doesn't need to. He's just got that look. Yeah. You know? he's, got he's, those... look, he, he's, he's got he's... that look like he's going to fuck you up. He's got those, those, he's got those, the those, pecs. Those, the pecs. Oh. Yeah. Go all the way down to his belly button. They're just huge. He can do that. <laughs> Really, he makes me like, feel flat chested. 
where he, I was like, I've never seen a, like a, a, an Asian dude with titties like that. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's Is it confusing? <laughs> it's very confusing. I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just got flashbacks to C.W. Longbottom and, yeah. and, his, and his Thailand adventures. I've never seen an Asian dude with tits that big. It's crazy. It's like if he had gone to like uh, if he'd gone to like sumo wrestling school, he'd be huge. Oh yeah. You know where they like eat like six times a day with yep. all the super dude. He's he's yeah. freaking badass. I love I'm him. Google if he's still alive because I bet he be. is. He's, he's got to be a thousand years old. He's, and I, I bet he's in he'll his He'll live 80s. for another thousand years. Was he not in any recent movies? But, but, you know, you got to remember. Probably, I think. Uh, what's Sean, the last? What's Sean, Sean Claude's in his probably sixties now, right? Yeah, I would so, say yeah. That's that's probably true. Look, hmm. man, I've been tagging Jean Claude a lot today on Twitter. <laughs> we love you, man. He's Bola, awesome. Bola Young we, we is really seventy four years old. Right <laughs> seventy four. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Wow. What's the last? Do you do you see what movie he's been in last? How long it's been since he's made one? Um, is there an know. IMDb? Find out for yeah. real quick. I'm curious about that. Um, All right, so. The movie itself, like, it is very complicated, but I was able to follow the story just fine. It was a nice, it was a bit of like a revenge movie with a little bit of like James Bond in there, some espionage, a little bit of spy action. I thought it was really cool. I, yeah. I mean, it wasn't complicated at all. So like their parents got murdered because they borrowed money from a mobster. <laughs> and uh, then the brothers get back together and they want to get a, a revenge for their parents' death. Yeah, but there's like an aspect of like... um having access to their parents' business or, or investment. I don't know. Right. Cause they, they, their parents owned the bridge between Hong Kong and somewhere else. And it like, was like an underwater bridge. Yeah. That was very confusing. There was, there's a money aspect to it. Mm -hmm. where like a corporation screwed over the family who built the corporation. It was almost like a Batman, Bruce Wayne type I, thing. I, I kind of, there's a lot of going on. I think I, it is kind of complicated. I, did, I didn't care about any of that stuff. No, no, uh, no. So, so like the, the evil, um, industrial guy uh, nigel griffith um he borrowed money from uh, the mob boss raymond zhang mm -hmm. to construct that tunnel and he was afraid that his business partner who was jean-claude van damme's father would find out about it and so he had him killed mm -hmm. so that he could continue his evil corporatist ways okay but the frank the uncle slash dad or whatever was yes. like you guys there's money to be had if you if you claim it, like, wasn't there an aspect of that? Like if you got in there and said, Hey, these were my parents, that you money is I mine. I did not get that. I got that Frank invested in a bunch of things in his nephew's name. Hmm. So they opened up this karate ballet studio. <laughs> and then he was like, Oh, by the way, we have, we also have a business in Hong Kong that puts this one to shame. But, but keep, yeah. Keep in mind that they moved to LA a few years ago mm -hmm. after growing up in France. Yes. yes. <laughs> they always have to explain Jean-Claude's accent. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, but they never explained, uh, I, I guess Alex. I guess the 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 orphanage that Alex grew up in was run by French people. Yeah. That's true. It was because they sang for <laughs> Jaca when she left yes. him at the doorstep. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, because uh, I I had the subtitles on uh, the second time that I watched it, and the nuns were speaking in French. That's more. <laughs> that's more better, right? God, I'm so drunk. More better. <laughs> that's more, more better. That's more better. Good stuff. <laughs> that's okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. That's Look, better attention to detail than yeah. most modern Hollywood movies. There yeah. we go. I got it out. The people on Twitter it's have good story writing. They, they have. They have literally. Kaylee especially and, has and watched I, us get she drunk. Has, she's listened to us go from Stone Cold Sober <laughs> to just flat out fucked up over the last three hours. I'm and fine. Jude's all like, screw you guys. You I'm guys like, are yeah. lightweights. Yeah, yeah. You want to do some shots? My cheeks are red. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Angel, you are. Yeah, it's I'm just, very <laughs> flushed. Okay, back to the show. Back to the show. Um, I just want to like say, God bless these boobies. In this movie. Oh, dude. Thank these, you for bringing that up. That is like, these are so good early 90s fake the flashback is incredible the, just, the the dream sequence sex scene i'm giving this oh i'm giving this movie like two extra stars <laughs> <laughs> that sex scene was amazing was so good so good because man those like nips were just like pointing to Perfect. the sky and, and it was incredible it was like this this girl is so hot it dude was she just, was amazingly beautiful and then like just it was it was it was strange I, how perfect I, they I were. I had forgotten how amazing nineties tits were. Nineties boobies were. It was just <laughs> and, 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 and what about the, like, the, the, the subtle you. implied lesbianism? Yeah, oh, it's what? everywhere, dude. It's just, There's a ton of sexuality in this movie. Yeah, I remember the the, the, the security henchman lady. lady. Oh, 
who was like pinned up the girl and was like, what are you going to do to me? And I was like, God damn. She, for me, was equal to um, Samurai Cop, the boss is coming lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, dude, I want to see like a... <laughs> Like a softcore porn with those two <laughs> ladies going at each other, she like was a fighting, redhead too. fighting, and no, also like yes, doing she was. it. No, it was a blonde and a brunette. No, the henchman lady was the no, red. No. no, not red. Yes, she was. Yes, yes. really. Yes, yes. 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 she was kind of auburn. I didn't. Oh, see you had see red I, did, I didn't see redhead there. Oh, oh but okay, I whatever. But anyway, fine. I believe you guys. Uh, but yeah, the character's name was was Kara, and at, at one point she uses her leather clad thighs to try to kill Jean Claude. Yes. yes, I think I think. Pierce Brosnan's James Bond with a golden yeah. eye ripped that off because the, the lady in that movie. Ivanka on the top? Yes, Ivanka. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Was she a pretty um, successful like stunt woman yes. in the 80s and 90s? I believe okay, so. Okay, I thought so. No, uh, Corina Everson is her name. I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah, she had I, a career. She's so buff. Yeah, I thought she had a career like Those she was a wrestler thighs. or something. She had to have been. Them gams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got some nice hams on her. Mm-hmm. I'm getting, I'm getting texts from people. <laughs> Calm down, Vader. <laughs> you gonna do time cop? <laughs> we already we did. did time cop. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, let's let's wrap this up. Um, We've been going a long time. We right? have been going for a long time. Uh, favorite There's moment. So much gold to invest in. I in know, all this of dude, we could talk about Jean Claude for hours. We, we love. We'll probably we love, do another one next year. I oh, hope we do. 100. percent 100. percent Jean Claude is, Van Damme or June Claude thing. Van Damme Part Three. We have to do old movies that we've already done because we have to do them on video. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah, for sure. And for the new subscribers. All right. Um, wrap Welcome, this up. By the way. Favorite moment. Favorite moment. And give it a rating. Oh, God. Um, Mr. Vader. I'm going to give this three and a half stars. Wait, hold no, on. No, no, hold no. on. Hold on. Because you gave no, it two no, extra stars for the sex scene. So I got to give it six and a half stars? What? <laughs> I, I don't, I oh, my God. This is that unprecedented. Doesn't, that doesn't really I'm work. I'm going out of my mind. <laughs> um, okay, fine. I'll go four. Four stars. That's good. I'll, I'll put it there with Cyborg. So, uh, Even though I really don't think it's as good as Cyborg. You're crazy. But for the um, amazing boobs, All right. I'm going to give it four stars. Okay. So I'm going to pause uh -huh. and ask you to put um, put your tit rating uh -huh. ver Cyborg versus this movie. Uh -huh. Just oh. based on tits. Just based on tits. Oh, well. Does what, this one win? This, one's, this, this one, one wins over Cyborg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, there really wasn't uh, the the boobs in Cyborg were kind of like hidden. They were apocalyptic. They were yeah, boob, yeah. You know? This no, one was you got you got some butt in Cyborg. Though. This, yeah, I mean, the butt was very nice. Oh, you got butt in this movie too. But but it this, was John Claude's, but still, <laughs> this, this weird sex scene that he had was just incredible. In it movie. was yeah, it and, was. and it was really and, good. And, uh, Alex's reaction where he's just like, no. oh my gosh, he was, he was drinking, like angrily drinking because he was imagining his brother having sex with his girlfriend. But the, the imagination that he was going through while he was getting drunk was the sex scene. Amazing. It reminds me of that scene in, and it's probably ripped directly from this movie in, in Happy Gilmore. Right, Happy Gilmore, where he's like picturing his like the uh, shooter McGavin having sex with everyone that he cares about, like his grandma <laughs> and the girl that he likes. It totally reminded or me the of scene that scene from Office Space where it's Lumberg. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, put your leg to the left a little bit. God. That'd be great. That's so great. gross. You're like really bringing me down right now. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'll, I'll give this a four Van Four, Dams. four nice. Van Dams. Four Van sure. Dams. You heard it heck? here, folks. Yeah, was, this is definitely top tier Van Dam movie. It's, it's <laughs> double, double your Van Dam, double your pleasure. That's amazing. Hundred percent. Yeah, right. On. Double and the it, Van Damage. And, it, and it's got Bolo Young in it, and he's yeah. just awesome with his, with his, with his the scar, and his with his smoky scars eye, and his bloody eye. It's yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. All right, Jude. Favorite so moment. And give this a rating. Uh, my favorite moment is probably in the beginning when Van Dam is talking about how he can do the splits to his um, oh. aerobicized <laughs> ladies. God, what a, I got turned on by that scene. I, 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 I he's, miss, he's wearing those skin tight yeah, like leotards. pink leotard dude back then when the chicks wore those like really like yeah. super high uh -huh. leotards yep. it was like man that does not look comfortable but I just I just really like looking Star at Star Trek that. Next Generation with Crusher oh, and dude that is like oh. the most infamous Star Trek Next Generation scene ever. amazing it's awesome yeah, I can't wait for you to watch that episode I'm excited <laughs> <laughs> alright did you give it a rating? No, I did not. Okay, go for it. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's my favorite scene, and um, I really enjoyed this movie. It's it. There's a lot going on, so if you're <laughs> here for story, this is your movie. Um, two Van Dams. God, two? I got I got I to double my rating because I got two Van Dams for the price of one. 
And this is probably a three star movie for me, so I'm gonna give it six stars. Six, <laughs> what? Six <laughs> stars? Wait, yes. three plus two is six. five. I'm gonna give it six, not Daphne Coleman's. <laughs> okay, whatever. Hey guys, points don't matter. All right. The rules six, are made six, up. Six plus two is five. Six plus two. <laughs> We're giving it a six out of five. <laughs> Three star movie plus two is six. <laughs> we're, so, we, we're bad at math when we're not drinking. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's hilarious. Okay, <clears throat> Matthew Kadish, favorite moment? Give it a rating. Uh, so my, I think my favorite moment is the final fight scene with Bolo Young, where they're literally like Donkey Kong throwing these like barrels of oil at it's each other. It's very Donkey Kong. Yeah, it, 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 it is. He's like leaping over barrels. And yeah. he said he popped up behind him and surprised him. Yeah. yeah. And and it's it's probably the worst climax to a fight I've ever seen on film because literally he doesn't defeat Bolo Young. He just kicks him into like this open and electrical panel. And he accidentally and then he, gets oh electrocuted yeah. and then blown up. Yeah. <laughs> it was so awesome. And, and the blow up scene, like where, where the explosion is, it's really weird because it, it's almost like they didn't film it in slow motion. So like they had to like do this choppy frame thing where Jean-Claude's like, oh as he's like you know uh got the explosion going so, on behind him let me ask this do you think that was anticlimactic with the way bolo young went out because yes as a filmmaker and john claude van damme they did not want to screw up blood sport because <sighs> blood sport to me is like peak revenge van damme yeah. movie you know it's just like and even even after blood sport first came out it was, a, it was like an instant classic to me, right? You know, so how can you like screw, having the same two dudes fight in the climax seem like it would be kind of weird. Well, you know what I okay, mean? Okay, but Bloodsport came out only a year before this. It doesn't matter. It just, I don't I know say, that if it, I don't know that it had like the momentum that it does, I remember that it, the, it has gained over the years. I remember this Bloodsport. Came out in 1991, right? I remember Bloodsport. Blood oh shit, I was thinking uh, 89. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. It was 10 years later, right? No, 88 versus 91. Okay. I, listen, I just remember Bloodsport. Everybody loved that movie. So it was just, I don't know. It's just, it seemed like I'll, a I'll weird. Say, <clears throat> see, see, to me, because Bolo Young was the one who murdered um, Jean-Claude Van Damme's mother, mm -hmm. there should have been a little bit more of a, like, climactic emotional resolution to, yeah. to him defeating Bolo Young's character. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, instead, he just gets kicked into an electrical panel and just, uh, I will. I will say this: if I was going to change anything about this movie, it would be that ending fight. And what I would do is I would have a little bit more set of how much of a badass this dude is throughout the movie, and then have the two brothers have to face off against him. Yeah, two versus yeah. one, and avenge their mother. That would have been cool. That would have been badass, and it would have been like he's so tough. It takes two Jean Claude Van Dams to take this dude out. I, don't, I, I, don't like th that. I don't think they have the technology to do. Well, they had body doubles. Dams they they, they, they could have cut it. around like, it. They, they could have done it. They fist bump going into the fight. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. I can already imagine what it would have looked like and have like, him take his shirt off and have those pecs just. Of course rawr. his shirt is off. Of course his shirt is <laughs> off. You know, Chad and Alex are like, for our mother. For um, our mother. Let's uh, do this. You know, they finally it. come oh, together. Yeah, and there's that one scene mm. when um, um, Papa Zang is like. <laughs> um, Nigel's getting too weak. I'd love to make you my go-to guy. And he's like begging for his life, basically. Like, yeah, if you yeah. let me live, I'll give you, I'll give you everything. And he's like, really? You'll give me everything? Want... How about my father? Oh, it could have been a, a <laughs> oh, Princess Bride moment. I want my father back, you son of a oh, bitch. Oh, fuck me! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Seven stars! <laughs> All right. Uh, my favorite moment, I think I have to lean with Jude. That split at the beginning of the movie really set the precedent for the whole thing. Um, that was incredible. It's on fire Whew, it's hard to hard to top that yeah. you know what fire. but i think honestly you can have that scene because i'm i'm i might change my mind about what my oh i was gonna is. say i'll give that one to you because no, 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 you can have it okay because i changed my mind oh, what'd you change it to <laughs> the the last moment of the movie where he's like <laughs> and then credits roll. Yeah, yeah. He, throws, he throws up the white power sign. And then, oh, the, the, then there's a is that a white power sign <laughs> and, and then there, there's a machine Only gun crazy sound people. effect only to crazy people. Is that a, is that a thing? <laughs> That's not a thing. Sadly, it kind of is, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a joke. Uh, well, okay. well, it was a yeah. it was a okay. joke that the media pretended oh, because would, of the K? because of Trump. Wait. No, it was a, was it not it was, it was a four chan meme. Oh, a four chan thing? Yeah, I don't they, know. I didn't follow politics, but yeah, people people have done dumb edit, things. Edit that shit out. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, I was, but like 
uh, he, he, he like throws up the okay. Yeah. It freeze frames. And then it gives you like a uh, gun, gun fire. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh shit, what's happening? And then just the credits roll. Yeah, ma- ma- machine gun gunfire. So yes. like they all actually died at the end because someone, someone just who survived mowed them down <laughs> with them a all. machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm avenging my businessman partner. Uh, I'll, I'll give this movie a solid four. It was great. It's actually, I think, might have been my favorite one of the week this week. Really? really? Yeah, I really liked it. This was actually it. my least favorite. No of the way. Week. Yeah. Yeah. By, by the way, my rating was um, three Bobo Young pecks. There you okay. go. Ooh. Three pecks. Yeah. Three peck flexes. There you go. Swole pecs. Yeah. Uh, sets of pecs or individual pecs? Indivi- individual. Oh, so we're going like uh, total Ooh. recall. So, yeah, like. <laughs> Three peck roll. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All cool. Right. All right, guys. That's it for our discussion of June Claude Van Damme Part Two. Thank you for joining us, especially you folks on Twitter that Come have been with us. Next June for more. Yeah. <laughs> next June we're going to be another another June Claude Van Damme episode. So join us and uh, like subscribe to the YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. And welcome to our new subscribers. I hope you guys enjoy the show. I hope you guys stick around. I hope you guys stick around. <laughs> we have a lot of fun stuff. We have a lot of fun on this podcast, and uh, we hope to um, you know share that joy with let's, you folks. Let's keep this thing going. Yes, sir. All right, Matt Vader, where can they find you on the socials? You can find me at Matt Vader 74 on uh, the Twitter and the Instagram and the YouTube. So yeah, there on you the go. Things. On, on the things. On the things. On the socials. I'm, I'm on other stuff too. Just, you know, just find me. You're the I'm, same I'm everywhere you go though, right? Yeah. At Matt Vader 74. Yeah, yeah. There's no other 74s with okay. that later. <laughs> okay. So. And Jude, where can they find you? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you are also narrating some books for Audible. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of books on Audible under my pseudonym, uh, June Aaron. Right on. Go check them out, guys. Audible.com. And Matthew Kadish. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H. I'm a very important and influential <laughs> figure. <laughs> so be sure to subscribe to get all my, uh, you know, elite tweets. And uh, you can also find me on kadishbooks.com. So we'll take it to my Amazon. If you want to get educated on journalism and news, follow Matt Kadish. You know what would be funny, he's full dude? of shit you know most fun- of the time. <laughs> She's not wrong. You know what would be funny is if you do that whole Twitter thing where you start charging people to view your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a thing that you would do. Oh, my God. Please do that. <laughs> no, I, I would want my thoughts to be freely oh, okay. given to everyone. <laughs> the more people to adore you, the better. <laughs> All right. I'm Alex, the Salty Nerd. You can catch me on Twitter at Salty underscore Nerd. And as always, stay salty, my friends.